Okay, well I haven't done an update on my orchids in a while, so I'm going to show you my setup, how I use to put them in the jars. So this is just a big clear plastic tote, which I cut holes into, and then put a fish screen top on there to keep the jars above the water level that gets down in here. And then I have the top underneath, and I just brought a spray bottle that's filled with alcohol and you just spray in there and then you cover up the holes and you let it sit for like 30 minutes and you spray again and cover up the holes again and let it sit for another 30 minutes then you spray all the way up and down your hands then you take your jars which should be in plastic bags with the tin foil on them with the little agar solution in it you put it in and then you spray one last time, and then you open it up and quickly put them in the jar. So to put them in the jar, I use a syringe, which I don't have to show you right now. But it's a 10 millimeter syringe, and I use hydrogen peroxide to do it. You suck up a little bit in the syringe with the seeds and hydrogen peroxide. You shake it around for like two minutes, and then you just spray it into your jar. And then the hydrogen peroxide breaks down into water and oxygen under light. So you have to leave it under like an intense light for 24 hours, I think. And it breaks down and it does a pretty well job. I just think it's easier than bleach. And if you do a whole bunch of jars, it doesn't really matter. I've recently started to put little band-aid filters on the tops of my... Uh, jars you just drill a little I don't think you can see it but there's a little pinprick hole and then you put this over top of it and it keeps it pretty well ventilated so that the gas exchanges can happen but there won't be any spores getting into it um if I was gonna do it again I would probably make like a little gasket so just my hand could fit in and there wasn't all this extra room and it'd be easier to get the jars in and out. I usually put a light on top, which is like a flashlight, so I can see in here better. And then sometimes water gets right here. Well, the alcohol solution gets right here, and it's hard to see, so that might be something I would fix. But you do that, and then you need something to put your jars into. And I just made a little wooden chest, which runs over here to a timer that I have set for 18 hours I think they need a little bit of light they don't need a lot because they're just starting out so in here right now I have some staghorn ferns that are coming up and then this one's a little bit better there should be videos on YouTube already about the staghorn ferns they're not hard to do but if I was gonna get into doing orchids I would practice on the staghorn ferns because they're easier but they still take some practice to sprout so here are my orchids you can see that sometimes they get contaminated you can go in there and cut that contamination out I just haven't done it yet and I don't think I'm going to because I have another jar of these and I just don't want to deal with that so I have a whole bunch of jars this is what it should look like after your hydrogen peroxide. All those little dots are seeds coming up in the middle. And I put the put a bag around it just to keep it sealed and put alcohol in the bag. And that one has the little band-aid on top. So what I wanted to show you guys was a couple months ago I did these guys. And they have just started to sprout. This is the germination media, so I still have to do the grow out media in a jar. I'm going to do those in a bigger jar. I'll grab one later to show you. But for right now, I think there's like 20 of them coming up. So i got to do these soon because they're getting pretty big. I have one more in here. He doesn't look like he's doing too well. But I'm going to plant him anyway so nothing else has come up. And it takes a while. You have to have patience if you want to do this. And same with the staghorn ferns. you got to have a lot of patience for this. But it's a lot more rewarding 
because you get a lot more babies. There's probably like 2,000 just in this container. Another 2,000 in here. That doesn't mean all of them are going to come out, but hopefully some will. And you get a lot of contamination in home culture. I mean like a lot. So I just try my hardest. So for the grow out containers, I'm going to use kind of like Snapple. It's called Mystic. And these, I actually poke some holes on top of them. Here, let me show you. Underneath, you can see the hole, and then over top of it, just the band aid. It's one of those little tiny ones. And it has like a cloth filter in there to make sure nothing gets in. That's what I use when I transfer them into the bigger jars. I'll show you guys their growing process and everything. And hopefully this helps you guys. If you have any questions, just ask away. And I'll do an update after I replant them all. Bye, thank you for watching.